Now, to the latest broadside from the APC chieftain and former aviation minister Femi Fanikayode aimed at, in his assessment, the rather meddlesome and interventionist UK government. Mind your business. We don't need lessons in democracy from abroad, he warns the British government. I won't be intimidated by a civil servant. That bit aimed specifically at the Deputy British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Ben Llewellyn Jones, who in an interview seemed to fault Mr. Fanny Coyote for making apparently insightful comments. Well, in his typically unapologetic and abrasive style, Mr. Fanny Coyote let out his latest tongue-lashing reply on Twitter. And it's in the context of a threat by the British government to impose a visa ban on those guilty of making insightful comments using inflammatory ethno-religious language and committing electoral crimes. But what impact does all this internal identity politics have on Nigeria's image abroad? And why is it causing such concern to foreigners? Well, for more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by Professor Tunde Esson, Professor of International Relations with a focus on the history of African elections and democratic developments on the continent. Prof, thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you, Charles, for having me here. So, as an international relations expert, help us look at this whole issue of internal identity politics and what impact it's having internationally because it's obviously having some repercussions outside Nigeria's borders. Thank you Charles. Let me start by saying that uh, there are two angles to it. Those who say that uh, Nigeria is a sovereign nation and that Britain or England or Great Britain or the High Commissioner has no business in interfering with the internal affairs of Nigeria. You understand? And those who say look the, in, the, the in dynamics of international relations have evolved over the years and there are changes that you must accept. Interventions by international organizations and powers has become a norm, particularly encouraging proactiveness on the part of the states and sovereign nations in addressing ethnic tensions and divisiveness and diversities because it has impact and repercussions beyond their borders sometimes. And of course, Nigeria and Africa is not an exception. You understand? The strategizing and the reconceptualizing the internal dynamics of our statehood is very, very important in addressing some of the issues that are within our borders. And that sometimes goes beyond our own borders, you understand? There's an ethnic tensions that reverberates and the law that causes even crisis. Sometimes it spills over the borders of a nation state. Mm. So it is becoming increasingly, you know, uh, of, Serious it is it is of serious concern to international relations experts that look, yes, sovereign nationhood is a reality in international relations, and it is an acceptable fact that look, a sovereign nation is a sovereign nation. That what you do and say in, inside matters a lot in determining your relations with other nations. Right. So let me just be clear. Do you see this whole identity politics issue, and the fact that it's clearly antithetical to national cohesion yeah. as causing considerable concern for the international community. Well, of course, if it's not causing considerable concern, Mr. Ben Jones wouldn't have spoken the way he did. Mm. And of course, like I always tell people that look, before an officer at that level speak, the Deputy High Commissioner to Nigeria is not just speaking on, on his own uh, accord mm. or based on his own you know, personal opinion is acting on behalf of a foreign government because it's not posted here to just come and look at what is going on. And of course, the dynamics of it is that, look, there are other issues that involve the repercussions in a nation where you f find out that the outward bound passengers is in double digits and inward bound passengers, particularly with young people under 35, then it should be of concern to everybody. Mm. And it should be of concern to even the Nigerian nation that look, some statements, actions and actions are very, very antithetical to international relations and engagements. Mm. So beyond that, sp the specific 
issue that you're referring to. Yeah. There's also the impact, because you and I were talking about this earlier, on yeah. cultural diplomacy. Yeah. And if that becomes negative, yeah. it could have a much bigger impact on things like the economy as well, couldn't yeah. it? L let me tell you something. Mm. Uh, modern states operate under certain norms, and you cannot, irreducible fact, irreducible, you understand, norms. And that is the fact that, look, the uh, universalization of certain cultures and certain norms and certain behaviors is inevitable mm. if you must deal with another nation state. You understand? There are certain things that must be there. For example, how do you treat others? They are, like I said, there are always difference between race and ethnic relations, ethnicity. Race is more about physical attributes, locations, environment, mm. while ethnicity is more about cultural relations, locations, and behaviors as it, as it concerns your um, environment. And in, intergroup relations that spans over centuries that makes you speak the same language and share the same culture. But whatever happens locally reverberates across the borders such that if you don't treat your fellow human beings very well here, if there are certain language and certain attitude and attributes that it negates normal behavior, acceptable behaviors it, universally, it affects whatever happens on the other side because, it, it, you know, nation states, you know, operate under mm. a broader, you understand, and uh, right. bigger. So it could you affect know, investors and all the rest of it, and that you know, their about. inclination their to inclinations, deepen uh, relations deep, deep with your relations. country. And let, so me, let me say this, you know, people just take these things for granted. The first place of choice for people, Nigerians in diaspora, when to want to invest is Lagos, mm. you understand? So when you have issues that borders on ethnic relations, incendiaries, and negative comments, you understand? It goes beyond what you think happens mm. here. How many Nigerians will say, oh, let me hold it. What's going on there? I want to operate in a very friendly environment. You understand? Mm. We cannot say, we cannot tell as at now that this is actually the cost in terms of, you know, the financial cost or the cost on the economy. But with time, we'll be able to say that mm. friendly environment is an acceptable norm in investment. Yes. And that is universally accepted. Yeah, that, that's a good point. So, yeah. so what angle do you think the British Deputy High Commissioner, Ben Llewellyn Jones, is looking at it from? Are they casting an eye on the long-term relationship between Britain and Nigeria? And Lagos, as you said, is at the center of that relationship? L let me say this about Lagos. Most people don't know this. When people say, okay, ah, because of certain language and because of what people say, that's why they are reacting that way. I say, mm. it goes beyond that, you understand? The consular, first consular office was opened in Lagos in 1851. And, you know, Lagos become a, became a protectorate in 1861. In 1914, with the amalgamation of the north and southern Nigeria, Lagos became the federal capital of Nigeria, the capital of Nigeria. And with, the, with, with independence in 1960, October 1, you understand, Lagos retained that role as the federal capital. In other words, about 10 generations of Lagosians have been living under the ambience of a multi-ethnic, a multi-dimensional, you understand, environment. And that you cannot minus it, particularly when you realize that the federal capital, the concept and the idea of moving the federal capital from Lagos started in 1975 when Muritala Mohamed came into power, particularly for his first statement and his first uh, pronouncement on it was on 9th of August, 1975. When you look at that, and in 1991, Babangida moved into Abuja. So, I mean, for a whole generation of Nigeria, more than four or five generations after independence, they don't know any other place apart from Lagos. And that means that we have to be very careful in what we say and what we do. I imagine that, look, Lagos without other Nigerians' investment is a big minus. It's very, very important. Mm. And it goes beyond our borders. Lagos without other people's in investment outside of Nigeria is a big minus. So when the British Deputy High Commissioner is speaking, it's coming from the historical background of the relationship between Nigeria and Britain, 
You understand? Nobody comes to Nigeria at that level without being schooled about the history of Nigeria, without being schooled about the history of Lagos. You understand? There are better ways. I did a study on the history of Lagos for a very long time. You understand? Many years ago. And what I discovered will make all of us to be proud of Lagosians and Lagos. The heritage, the culture, the antecedent of the great families of Lagos, the Fanandex, the Aguda, the Shomolus, the Cardosos, the Darochas, the Rhodes, and so many other families that inhabit Lagos that has an history of education for about 200 years. I mean, that, that should be of encouragement to everybody. What I think we are lacking basically is universalizing our culture that what I, and that, that is what I keep saying like uh, you know uh, using ethnic tones using ethnic uh, language to dissuade persuade or discourage one or one another in this generation is an aberration to mm. national growth so and I think that's where British government and the mm. British High Commissioner is coming from. Yeah, well, that was what I was going to talk to you about yeah. because, I mean, you, you sound like you're not really bothered about who's right or wrong. Yes, As I'm an international relations uh, professor, yeah. you can see this irrespective of sovereignty, the way that you've described it as having an impact internationally and yeah. causing concern yeah. Yeah. beyond Nigeria's borders. Yeah. Um, so, having as the colonial master, which yeah. Britain is, mm. having created the fertile ground mm. for that internal identity politics, mm. what do, I mean, I know you don't speak for the British, but you study a lot of these things. Mm. What, do, what do the British now see as the alternative? Because they're the ones who created the ground for that internal they, they you know, see a uh, great Nigeria. identity politics. They, they, you know, a lot of people, you know, no matter what you say about the background to the whole story, the historical background, the British involvement, the colonialism, mm. colonialism, the British involvement, divisionism that happens prior to 1960. 60-year-old uh, nation is not a young nation as it were. Like I said, whatever this, wherever this is coming from, it might be from politicians, mm. but it, it should be shocking to Nigerians outside. And let me tell you one of the reasons why it's so uh, is, is of concern to Nigerians outside of Nigeria and other international relations pundits and experts is because whatever happens in Nigeria has its own repercussions on the image of Africa. Nigeria with its diversities, 200 ethnic groups plus ethnic groups, distinct groups that have been cohabiting and relating together for hundreds of years, you understand, wherever there is an aberration or a minus, naturally, the closest of all your international friends raises an eyebrow. Like mm. I said, there are two angles to it. Those who say, look, this is a sovereign nation, they can actually you know, mind their business. They are correct. But those of them who feel that, look, I cannot mind my business if my investment in Nigeria is equivalent of the GDP of another country. I cannot just sit, keep sitting down mm. and say, it didn't concern me. And beyond that, there are millions of Nigeria outside Nigeria, your Nigerians outside Nigeria. They are worried about that. And we should be worried about that too. But all the same, Lagos remains a great heritage, not only for Lagosians, but for Nigeria. And I'm very proud of Lagos. The only thing is that it will be dangerous for politicians or whoever to be using Lagos, you understand, as a battleground in order to actually make a point, in order to express themselves. Maybe in a negative way, I don't know. But as long as it concerns Nigerians and those who love Nigerians, we should be of, you know, we should call it be of, uh, you understand, it should be of interest to us. Mm. Yeah. Well, very wise words indeed. Prof, I want to thank you very much, yeah. mm -hmm. um, as always. Uh, mm -hmm. Professor Tunde Asson is Professor of International Relations with a focus on the history of African elections and democratic developments on the continent. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.